Um, yeah, this is a bit about sailing and financing and, and the maritime and the financial world. Um, Riot and Ian uh, are passionate sailors and they started to develop a system where you can on one hand replace the, the, the chart plotter that every one of you knows, of course, we are all sailors, and uh, crew management and uh, ship management. Uh, they came into contact with the financial world trying to, to raise funds and um, they are going to talk about it and tell the, the progress they have made, what they have made and what they're going to do. So please welcome Ian and Riyad. It's very warm in here. Thanks for showing up, thanks for being here. My name is Eon. Um, I will be holding this talk together with Riot. His microphone is being fixed here. Come up here later. <clears throat> yeah, Hackerfleet, what happened? Um, we founded in 2011 a startup, um, the Hackerfleet, to um, build hardware for the oceans. The mission is to connect up the other 71% of this planet's surface. The land masses are pretty well connected, but on the oceans there is just no infrastructure except for satellite connections, and those are pricey. So um, we, the plan is, the plan was to mount standard hardware with proper antennas on every ship and to do a Wi-Fi mesh network with them to make ship owners connect their sensors to um, their hardware that they could have bought with us and then to share the received data uh, with all other um, ships in the area so everybody can profit from wind measurements or depth measurements, uh, better charts and better weather information. <clears throat> and then finally all that information gets displayed on a, on a web application through a web server that's run on board on our hardware and um, displays a, a full nautical suit to uh, all of the crew and guests on board uh, through the devices they already own, like smartphones, um, laptops, tablets, everything with a browser. Yeah, um, the initial business model that on which we tried to raise funds uh, was pretty simple and consisted of uh, three different um, income sources. The first one was to make and sell hardware. Um, the second income model, we estimated about 10% of our total net income would come through a participation fees of commercial ship owners because they would obviously save a lot of money on satellite connections uh, by using the mesh network to get weather data. So we thought we could build them a bit. And the third part was customization. The range there would have been from a very simple, let's, can you make the interface look like the color of my couch on my yacht? Uh, at the low end to um, please implement a full FEM analysis for towed objects like all platforms uh, so we know the strengths and forces in every single girder that is being towed over the ocean. Um, that would be the, the range from possible um, customization features. And on that business model, we uh, started to search for investors. We did that... Um, with um, <clears throat> the, the base facts around that were that we plan to outsource the uh, and production uh, to a company. Buzzword Bingo would be contract manufacturing. Um, and uh, the uh, other thing that we didn't want to have in-house was the e-fulfillment, uh, another buzzword for uh, a company that just stores packets for you and relays them to uh, uh, owners of devices as soon as an API received their address which is basically an Amazon warehouse that you can rent. E-fulfillment, fancy stuff. We estimated that we needed about 4.7 million euros over the course of three years to pull this operation off in such a, a, a described way. And in that time, we planned to go from two employees, me and my business partner, Riot. Like, is your microphone working by now? Yay. His slides are coming later, but anyway. 
Hello, I'm Ryata from co-founder of the Hacker Fleet and lead developer of the software package. Thank you. Yes, so we estimated that we would go from two employees, me and Riot, to 60 over the course of those three years. Um, so how, where we, how can we get that money, the, those 4.7 million euro that we estimated? We made up, we learned that there are three main money sources. First, government grants. Second, credits. And third, venture capital. Let me explain you the reasoning why we um, opted for venture capital. The government grants that are available in, in Germany are usually rather small uh, if uh, you can get them without uh, private investments. That would mean something between 10 and uh, 50,000 uh, euros as a total government grant for a, a small size startup. Um, that you can get pretty easy with just some pitching effort and some business development uh, with suits and ties and expensive consultants. But that's not too hard, but it's too little money. There are a lot of um, big grants that um, give out a lot more money in the uh, millions and several of millions, but they work a bit differently. They work like, um, like the government is adding money to an investment. So when, the, when a private investor, let's say, invests 1 million euros, uh, and you get a government uh, grant with uh, a quota of 45%, that would mean that uh, the government then would give you 450,000 euros. Depending on which program, those quotas are between 45 and 85% on the private investment on top of that. Um, so we looked for those, we talked with some of these agencies, and they were like, oh, awesome, high tech, finally some proper idea, not the next cookbook, uh, cookbook app or with recipes for cooking at home. Uh, and um, said, yeah, awesome, please come back as soon as you have a private investor. And we were like, yay, that's how it's supposed to go. Uh, venture capital will be easy. Um, so we started our search for venture capital with um, the perceived um, positive answer of some government grant organizations. One would be the HTGF, Hightech Gründerfonds, uh, Hightech Entrepreneurs uh, uh, Fund. The other uh, is from the Investitionsbank Berlin, IBB. Anyway, uh, with these informations in mind, gathering magic capital was for us the logical decision, um, so we started to do that. Um, we estimated that there were some risks in our uh, company and organizations attached to that investment. That is the true list of risks, not what we told our investors. Um, some we kind of kept a bit um, short. So first one, software. We, until today, have no idea of whether our concept of a mesh network um, based on, um, what, what was it called? Better approach to mesh networking? Batman. Yes. Batman. Uh, whether our concept based on Batman will actually work with the protocols that we thought there is still a big chance that as soon as we set it up with a couple of hundred chips in some denser areas of the oceans, um, that it, it will result in total lockdown because the mean transfer unit will get too small as compared to the overhead in the transmission. That's one risk. Another would be the stability of our software and hardware. There is no use if uh, it needs to be serviced regularly because in commercial uh, ship owning, if, if, if something breaks, you either have, you either have a replacement or the technician can get to it in, let's say, eight months in that port on the other end of the world for six hours. That's how they do service of electronics on big ships, so it has to work or otherwise it's, it won't be bought. Stability of the software and the hardware. With the hardware, the risks that we um, learned about were, were that we might encounter problems with our subcontractors. As soon as you have e-fulfillment and contract manufacturing, wow, how awesome buzzwords. Uh, as soon as you have that, if they can basically, yeah, you're in the, their hands. If they decide to raise prices, you need to come up with a lot of money to change your manufacturer. Um, secondly, uh, we, although we built and bought um, housings to military standards, we were never really sure whether they would withstand the environment, although that's a pretty low risk, I think, because it's all military standard. Um, yes, another thing would be price inflation of critical components, and um, 
we, until today, haven't found a supplier that can make that type of antenna that we specifically require for this project. Um, but those are problems that can be dealt with as soon as there is money, we always thought. So, um, yeah, some, some other questions that we had was uh, how much data will we actually um, get from the ships? Like, will it be a couple of megabytes per day? Will it be a couple of hundred megabytes per day? And because of that, we were never really sure how much um, money we need to account for in each product for storage. Technically, it's not so complex to just add more, but on the business perspective of things, it's a, signif it's a significant cost factor. Um, so that's another risk that we didn't tell our investors about. Um, yeah, and th the last one that no startup ever talks about is uh, that we feared that if any of the above goes wrong, then we might have too many returns due to hardware failure. Um, on the sales side of things, there are some things that our investors actually pointed out and where we l learned that from that we have from there. We were never able to calculate the cost of customer acquisition, which is basically um, you take the number of products you've sold within a given period of time and then you take the uh, costs of your whole sales department and marketing and, and you divide those two with each other and in the end you have theoretically the cost of customer acquisition for your product. Um, we were never able to come up with any model that could predict or even give a rough range on where we sh uh, should put this, uh, this number. Um, we also feared that the installing of the hardware and the perception of the installing of the hardware on board might be too complex for our customers or too time-consuming and thus off-putting with the sales decision. And um, in the end, the obvious too little customers too late, uh, which is a failure uh, reason for a lot of startups. And in the end, the team issues, and those were never brought on any uh, table with any investors. Uh, we are up to, up to today uh, very conscious about that risk that as soon as you have serious money in a company, then there might be a conflict between open source versus proprietary uh, software blobs. That conflict hasn't been able to be resolved by us because we failed to gather investment. Who would guess on that track philosophy? Um, and the other uh, thing was that obviously through all the sensors and all those ships we would harvest a lot of data that's currently just being thrown away. It's got this on the bridge and then it's gone. The storage function is just not there for wind speed or wind direction. Why would it? Um, so those informations and a lot more that we would gather through our hardware um, are of value but there is an ethical question attached to whether you can actually sell that data or act on that value. Um, and to, we as two open source conscious persons were always uh, thinking whether future investors might actually force us with the majority of shares to change that, which is kind of hard finding investors. Uh, because for those cases, we were always really sure that in, in such a case, we would need to, yeah, burn our baby. So uh, nobody gets harmed. Yes, so uh, with the numbers, the two slides earlier, and with some of the risks that I just told you, and calculations and a lot more, we went to investors and to pitch events and to uh, investor speed dating, which is one of the weirdest things I've ever done. Uh, and usually on these events, I was... Some of them I went there alone, some riot came with me. Um, and usually there, were, there was a lot of bullshit. I've, I've probably met about 10 bleeding edge, internationally operating, uh, globally um, recipe apps for cooking on those events. And a lot more stuff, affiliate marketing uh, from dusk till dawn. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy out there what you can see. Uh, so, and because of those craziness, as soon as somebody comes there with a 
let's say, proper idea of how we can make humanity better and earn money with it, because that's what an investor wants to know. How fast can he get his money back and more? Um, we received always the, feed, uh, uh, the feedback, oh, it's an awesome idea, but, and I have some uh, uh, excerpts that I would like, like to read to you of, of those answers that, that, that we received. So uh, it's a hardware startup. We are developing hardware, but we were met by one investor with the expectation of being cash flow positive in nine months and ready for exit in 18 months. That's like not even possible with a proper e-commerce startup. Like maybe one in a thousand, but not with hardware. It's absolutely impossible. Um, then an investor was like, like telling me 10 minutes how awesome that idea is because he owned also a yacht. Uh, and then he told me about that they can't invest because they only do B rounds. So the second investment, not the first investment. Uh, I don't know why that investor then couldn't just said, nah, it's, it's a nice idea, let's, let's do that. <clears throat> but if you'd only do B rounds, I guess you buy shares more expensive. Um, and then we heard at least twice or three times something along the lines of, great name, no, great idea, but the name is not appropriate for your audience. You need to change your brand and do a, uh, do a case study on your brand perception. We can't invest until you have come up with a new brand name and perception. So yeah, it's called Hacker Fleet. It's open source. Um, I think that name is good. We'll keep it. The product's named OpenSea Data Mesh, OSDM. Um, yes, and sure, if necessary, we're definitely going to build a sales organization with something like Digital C Systems or whatever. That name might be already taken, but something serious. Um, just for sales, not for development. Um, and then one of the better ones, great idea, but can't you do something about the hardware? It's expensive and hard. Maybe develop a business model and product with just software. Please, please take the heart out of hardware. That's, that's what an investor told us to, to do. Like, seriously, that's what you want? Like, to, you want to destroy the idea and then invest in something that's less difficult? Hmm. Okay. And then, uh, oh yeah, um, we were told that we need to remove the requirement to own a ship before you can become a customer, which is especially awesome for a company that makes ship computers. Yes. So, so please uh, uh, remove the requirement to own a ship before we can invest in you because your target audience is too small if you have to own a ship before you can buy the product. Yes, awesome. And, and probably like the best until last, um, we, we are, I was told by an Russian born, Israel based um, investor um, that we are not investable until we have sold all data that we might uh, gather in the future preemptively to ship insurances. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, that was one of those ethical questions that I told you earlier about. At which point we would need to burn that baby if any majority uh, of, of shares would have such an idea that we need to throw all our data privacy concerns overboard and sell everything that we might have in the future to an insurance company. But that's somehow how it works. But as soon as you heard all of those reasons, um, you were probably thinking exactly as I am that that can't be the true reasons, that that can't be the truth, that that's uh, the, the reason why they don't invest in us and it took us about one and a half years to figure out what the true reasons were. And uh, we, came, we came to this, like we were told, think big, venture capital, you need to think big. So we said 4.7 million euros for building a company that makes hardware. Um, so we designed a business model to get hardware out fast within three years because that was what we estimated would any investor like to see uh, before cash flow positive and much longer periods until the company gets cash flow positive is with today's venture capital market not possible anymore because they are all looking for e-commerce and through years there is a standard. So we made a business model where we can get hardware out fast and earn some money on the hardware. Um, but the investors never really understood that the big value in the organization comes from the operation of the global mesh network, the uh, infrastructure, the connecting up the other 71% of the planet. 
and all the benefits that come from it. The, some of, like most of them just didn't got it and thought that uh, they would need to get their money back from just the hardware sales. But uh, capitalizing on the mesh network takes at least five to ten years, at least, at least an hour estimation, and no investor likes to wait that long. Um, yes, so we learned from investors that hardware making and selling is not a sufficient business model because you can only triple or quadruple the, the, your investment that way because you need to pay for hardware. It's, it's, it's not an indefinitely scaling business model. It's a business model that can only scale linearly but not exponentially because in the end you still need to make that hardware and bring it out there. So just making and selling hardware is not enough to get venture capital. And then in April, we learned that we accidentally designed from the business development side of things a medium-sized hardware manufacturer instead of a buzzword, instead of a bleeding edge global operating business with exponential opportunities to, to the operation of the infrastructure. Again, that was a bit fast, okay. Um, we accidentally built a medium-sized hardware manufacturer instead of a bleeding edge global operating business with exponential opportunities through the operation of the infrastructure. Yes, yes, I can do that, and I did that a lot for investors, but I thought I should spare you the hassle a bit. Um, so, in the end, like by now, we failed to raise money, but while we failed to raise money, obviously the software development never stopped. So, um, I am very, very happy that I can hand the stage to Riot and have him show you uh, how far we got. There will be an unreleased party tonight, we're doing an unrelease because we're doing continuous integration and version numbers don't mean anything. We would like to celebrate that you're all here with us and that um, we can, yes, look at what we did. This is the core menu, the startup menu, when you uh, launch the system on your mobile phone or your tablet. Um, our goal is to actually do the, the step from like static open office like software to Etherpad, like you can collaborate together. That's why we bring this on your phone, so the whole crew can pick out their phone and use the system. Um, the software is served from a machine on your system, on, on your ship, and uh, via Wi-Fi, for example, you can actually connect clients. You can also use Ethernet cables and static devices, but Wi-Fi phone is the easiest solution. Um, this is actually one of the, the core elements. It's obviously the, the C chart, but we, we, what you see here is a view that can be shared. Um, like when you, you do the first trip planning, you discuss the route you're going to sail, and the skipper can move the chart and arrange the waypoints, and everybody else can watch it on their devices and see what's, what's going to be planned and discuss this together. There's a lot of features that make navigation easier, like uh, yeah, waypoint planning and stuff. Um, we also have integrated a chat function, because when you're on a larger ship, that makes sense, or when someone is in the harbor, for example, the chat function is... Uh, uh, Everywhere, but so it's it's an overlay. Yeah, sorry for the small font. Also, I we integrated a Terminator and the Twilight Zone. Um, this is uh, the the form for crew management, where you can actually edit your profile and and set your settings. Like you can uh, your your map markings when you add some waypoints. For example, they have a certain color, so they can be distinguished. Uh, we also have um, client configuration, so you can actually remote configure other clients on your ship which you have user rights to. The user rights system will be incoming in the next few months. Um, this is the vessel detail form. There is lots, lots, lots of fields on there. We, we will optimize this a little bit, but uh, most of these fields are serve uh, purposes where we plan to add new features like uh, your, your bunker um, status, so you can actually uh, get an alert when the, the when your fuel is going low and other data. Um, also, the bank count, for example, is for crew management, so you can actually plan ahead. Um, also, an another point is the, the 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 dimensions of your ship are all in there, so you can actually see if the bridge you're going to cross is 
too high or uh, too low, or your ship is too high, so you can act actually remove uh, parts on top. Yeah, so the system can give you a warning when it thinks that you are about to pass under a bridge that might be too low for your high state. Most ships can be like stuff can be taken off or flipped down or uh, uh, moved Lower down, the so you can pass under bridges. Uh, we also added a wiki. I'm not sure if I need to explain this. Uh, for obvious purposes, we can document your ship, whatever. Um, this can also be synchronized later on with the internet. And there is a lot more to come. You just, we just, I just threw an ex a screenshot from Waffle IO because I like it to go through our GitHub features. You can see the code and contribute and make the code better and uh, help us do this at github.com slash hackerfleet slash halfos. So, um, and right now, we will do some, yeah, world first. We will attempt to do management by crowd. Um, we have uh, four strategies. We need to pick one, and we will, and we will decide which to pick depending on your input. Um, we will have a discussion right, right after this talk in the BA Avalanche together. Everybody uh, is welcome to join in. It will be streamed and recorded as well. And we will present four strategies that we will discuss there. Um, let me get, it, get quickly through them. It's, we're going to start that at 1915. Uh, and we will discuss each uh, strategy for 20 minutes. Um, the first one is that we continue our search of venture capital. It has pros and cons, but we are a bit over time, so we will discuss pros and cons over there and not here. Uh, second strategy is uh, that we continue with the crowdsourcing or a very, very early pre-order, so you order and pay and get the product like two years later. Uh, and third strategy is that we would be relying on DIY hardware and just continue with the software and hope that enough sailors, enough maritime personnel starts to throw uh, the software on any computer that is uh, connected to the sensors on board. And the fourth strategy would be that we would sell that idea to a single ship owning company like a yacht charter company or uh, a, a big um, cargo company. So um, strategy five and others uh, and more uh, is up to you. Please tell us at 1915 over in the BA village on their stage. Here is how you get there. We are right now in track north and you walk south from here in that direction uh, on the Russell route until you get to the Weizenbaumweg and there you turn left and walk uh, behind the teepees and behind the teepees is a stage and that's where we will be after we have walked there over as well. Um, do we have time for questions? If we stretch it a bit, I would say we have three minutes. Okay. Yeah, it we... is. 1800 now. Okay, okay. So uh, if you have any questions uh, nine, regarding yeah. the strategies, like I haven't even explained them by now, uh, but I will do that over there. Um, if you have questions regarding anything else, please ask them now. Let's do one or two, maybe. Is that okay? Yes, please. I'm just wondering how many shipping companies you spoke to. Uh, some. Or like how big your research was and how intense. Uh, I spent uh, that like about two years of my life full time. Only speaking, only speaking to the shipping companies, or because I've got a no, no, slightly the, different view. The strategy of, of uh, selling this to a shipping company is one that we haven't yet chosen, uh, but no, that's no, an option speaking. on the table, and we will discuss no, that I, option later. Sorry, the way I understood your presentation was you see your hardware on the ships on the oceans, right? Yes. So you obviously need to speak to the people who own the ships or who run the ships. Yes, we did that. And it, we were met with, oh, yeah, awesome, we need that. And nothing more. Yes. OK. Another question? Obviously, there are a lot of different features and business <coughs> models that uh, any um, shipping company uh, would have asked us and discussed with us whether they are possible. And in some cases, we were able to uh, impress them. And in some other cases, we, we, we said, um, maybe too complex. Let's ask in two years again. Anzi. Yeah, I, I really like this idea. It's, I think it's really awesome. But I wonder, um, this idea of a mesh network on the ocean, this sounds for us hackers very obvious. Is it, is it not already in the mind of some ship um, equipment companies? 
Until now, we haven't found any mesh networks on uh, in shipping companies. They are all relying on satellite and pay three to ten thousand euros a month for each ship just for connectivity. That's what they do, and that's how they operate. Because like, just the fuel for a big tanker uh, per day is like in the area of five hundred to a million uh, uh, euros. Just the fuel for one day operation on at sea. So um, a couple of thousand euros for internet is. Uh, affordable for the, by those, but for all the small sailors, all the sm sm smaller ships, the privates, the yachts, the fishermen, it's not affordable. So let's do a mesh network. Okay. Uh, who wants? Uh, we meet up very soon, right after this talk at the BER. If you go down the street, down the lane, uh, you see a Buckminster Fuller, a sphere, semi sphere, and then it's, it uh, turns left. So. so, thank you very much. <laughs>